guys, it's Jane. It's Friday today, and so I'm back for another Friday Reads. It's been a big, exciting week in my life. I've read books, I've gone to the movies, I went out to see a band, everything's bananas. I even cleaned up, oh, where are we here? I cleaned up my bookshelf. How about that? That happens once every three years or so. It happened this week. That's exciting, isn't it? So let me tell you about what I've been reading. The first book that I finished was The Anchoress by Robin Cadwalder. I'll put the book cover here so you can see how you spell her name because I'm clearly still not able to pronounce it properly. This is written by an Australian author and they had it at my local library and I really like the cover art and kind of the, the short description of the story intrigued me. It's probably not exactly my normal sort of thing but it was a really good read. Uh, it's the story of a 17-year-old girl, Sarah, who voluntarily enters into life as a religious recluse in 12th century England. This is a historical thing that actually happened, and the author did a lot of research into um, the lives of these women who did who took these decisions and then she has created an imaginary example and we delve into her backstory what her day-to-day -day life is like um, and it's uh, it, the two main characters are Sarah and um, Ranulf her confessor who's a priest from the local monastery who works as a scribe and who relatively reluctantly takes on the role as Sarah's confessor uh, because the abbot needs to have somebody doing it if they're going to get the money that they've been promised on behalf of Sarah to take her on and look after her. It's a slow-moving, slow-burning, quiet story on a very small canvas that actually reaches really quite dramatic highs despite all of that. Um, we slowly have unfolded for us the the reasons that Sarah has been led to make these decisions and, and that it's really interestingly developed. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of stuff about religious faith and particular things about how the church worked in the Middle Ages in England. Uh, the author doesn't really seem to have a dog in the fight one way or the other. She's just trying to imagine what it felt like from the inside. So she's not really either defending or critiquing religion. She's just sort of thinking through what it would have felt like. Sarah is a really interesting character and her growth throughout the story is really interesting. She, she starts off as fairly sheltered and naive and she grows into somebody that you really kind of feel a lot for and respect and yeah it's 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 a really interesting idea for a story and I think it was well done the second book that I read this finished this week was A Trifle Dead by Olivia Day. I've already done a uh, standalone review of this for Mystery Monday. I enjoyed it so much I wanted to talk about it straight away. Uh, this was a real cr little little gem of a book and if you're interested in um, a mystery, why don't you go and have a look at my video where I talk about it or just rush out and get it. My understanding is that it's really cheap on the Kindle store right now. So if you're a Kindle reader, why not look out A Trifle Dead by Livia Day. The third book that I finished this week was The Martian. I picked this one up because everybody, I mentioned The Martian in my video last week and everybody said, you haven't read The Martian, you have to read The Martian, Jen, you'll love The Martian. And so I read it and yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was everything that everybody always said. Um, it was really tightly plotted. I cried any number of times while I was reading it basically from emotional release after he narrowly escaped dying again. And um, yeah, so it was a good read, a solid read. It's great Hollywood fodder. I think it'd make a fantastic movie. I just, I don't think it was anything more than that. I think it was really good, but I don't think it was anything spectacular. I don't think you're going to miss out if you don't read this book. I also, I'm keeping up with my Bible read along. I, poof, I finished Exodus and Leviticus in the last week. Didn't really read Leviticus entirely very super closely because, you know, you've either got to sit down with a fine tooth comb and do that stuff really super carefully or you might as well just let it wash over you. So, yeah. Um, so I'm up to the last two books of the Pentateuch now. Number 
Numbers and Deuteronomy. So excellent, excellent. Looking forward to that. I went to see Far From The Matting Crowd, which I talked about in my video last week, and everybody asked me how it was. It was good. It was good. It was, it kind of almost nearly did have a happy ending, which is kind of surprising given Thomas Hardy um but it's kind of it's I don't know it's melodrama is kind of what it is and and um so I just gave myself over to that and in the screening there was a lot of no no don't do that no uh, <laughs> thankfully some other people joined in it wasn't just me but yeah so that was good I also um actually snuck back on the weekend by myself and went to see Love and Mercy the Beach Boys movie that I mentioned that I was uh, trying to get my friend to go and see but she wasn't interested and um that was amazing that was amazing if you if you're at all interested in the kind of music biopic if that says anything to you whatsoever then this was an amazing one um all the main actors were incredible there's two guys playing Brian Wilson one as a young man one as a kind of middle-aged washed up you know dude and that's John Cusack in that role Elizabeth Banks who plays the love interest to the older um, version of Brian Wilson was just amazing this was a great movie so there's that okay now before I run out of time completely, I need to tell you what I'm reading at the moment. And let me tell you, I am reading a corker. I am. Um, I the other thing that I did in this past week, I, my my kids have been away. That's why I managed to get so much stuff done. They're back now, but they were away for a few days over the last weekend. Hence my excitement and my clean bookshelves. Anyway. One of the things, one of my projects that I did while they were away is I went and joined a whole bunch of extra libraries in order to um, have access to their ebook collections. If anybody's even vaguely interested in how you go about doing that and, and what I've discovered in my research in, in following this up, let me know because I have learned a whole bunch of stuff. I'm just not talking about it because it's probably only applicable to ebook readers who live in Victoria. So if that's you, let me know and I will word you up, but otherwise we'll just move on from there. So anyway, one of the libraries that I joined had this book available as an ebook, and I was like, I am so reading that. It's the Three Body Problem. There was a huge amount of hype about this kind of a year ago or so. It's only just been uh, become available in Australia recently, and um, the hype has died out so much. I was really wondering whether I should bother, but I'm so glad that I did. This is a corker of a read. I'm a bit over halfway, and I am love, 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 love. Loving it, so hopefully I'll be finished by end of next week, and I can tell you all about it. But yay, I am so loving the three body problem. Well, basically that's it. When I finish that, I've got to get on to the violet tragedy because I've got to that read along. Got to get onto it. I'm sorry, Gemma, if you're watching this, I am getting onto that soon. And um, why don't you tell me what you're reading at the moment? And if you if you know done anything exciting in the last few days. I um, hope you're all well and I'll talk to you later. Bye!